live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for VMworld 2016 at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. We're in the hang space where the Cube is located. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We're here with Chad Sackett, who's the uh, president of EMC's Converge Platform Division, formerly known as VCE. Well, welcome back, great to see you. Miss Pump. Dude, it's good to see you. Seven years we've been doing theCUBE, you've been on it every single I, year. I can't believe we it. We love you having you on. So, so look, I, I, uh, the Cube has become a fixture of VMworld for me. Seeing you guys, your, your, your good looking faces, it puts <laughs> a smile on my face. But I can't believe it's been seven years, that's insane. Yeah, the seven year itch as they say at VMworld. So I got to ask you, you're always candid and colorful, so I, but you've seen the transition. Yep. You've been in the trenches, coding. Now you're president of a division, big division, doing great. Um, it's terrifying, isn't it's, it? It's, it's, it's interesting, <laughs> we're all getting, the cube is bigger, we're all getting bigger. Um, what's your take right now? You've, you've seen the journey seven years. Yep. And we're, you know, where are we? So look, uh, VMworld has always had uh, a huge community. One of the things that's been defining about VMware's whole journey has been the community, and that's one thing that's stayed pretty constant, right? There's a lot of people here, this time in Vegas, previously in San Fran. They're, they share a passion and a love for all things that VMware's doing. That said, uh, it's a very different show. Uh, it's a very different context, it's a very different ecosystem. Like, you know, literally at the beginning, it was one product, right? Uh, you know, now if you look at the keynotes, they have to struggle to get all of the awesome into an hour and a half and do it in two days, right? Uh, and they can only hit certain highlights. I mean, so Sanjay did a great job today, Kit did a great job, my favorite, Yen Bing. Yan Bing Lee has got passion, energy, and, uh, and uh, you know, loves her baby VSAN. But tr imagine trying to cram all that stuff in. Previously, in years past, if you go back seven years, that would have been all of VMworld would have been just been on one thing, right? Yeah. And then obviously the other thing that's going on is the entire ecosystem has changed, right? So we're seeing consolidation in the ecosystem, but we're also seeing, uh, I think Pat actually did the best job I've ever seen of that realistic balance of what's happening in traditional IT, private, public, hybrid cloud models, and how that's going to play out over the next few years. But there's no question that public clouds are a huge part of the landscape for here, for now, for yeah. tomorrow, and forever. You know, Pat got some, some criticism on Twitter, and I saw some blog posts out there, said that the keynote was a snoozer, but it was straight talk, and that's what the ecosystem wants from what we're hearing. Yep. Stu might have his own opinion on this, but what I'm hearing is, I want to see the path. Look, I want to see what VMware is going to be going so I can get behind that train Clarify, show me the straight and narrow, narrow roadway so I can you know, turn up the gas so, a little bit. So, you know, there's, there's the expression that basically says uh, customer's always right or the people are always right, you can trust the people. Sometimes the customer is wrong and sometimes the people are wrong. So last year they went bananas over vMotioning a VM between two clouds because it plays to the base. It plays to the audience that are like, I love vMotion, why wouldn't vMotion between clouds make sense? The reality of it is, is that while that was cool and technically accurate, this year's demonstration of basically saying, no, you're not going to vMotion VMs between on-prem and public clouds very often, if at all, but you will need to be able to do things that bridge public clouds is actually a much more correct and relevant answer for the market. Now, the difficulty is, is that you know sometimes you're telling people things before they're ready to fully internalize it. <laughs> <laughs> it's shock to the system almost, really. Yeah. So you play the base, it's a lot like politics in, 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 in that way, but I got to ask you the question, you've been... By the, the way, when you, just like in politics, if you constantly play to the base, you never move forward. Yeah, and this has always been a diverse ecosystem. So let's start with the cloud thing. So obviously ecosystem's back on the table, I'd say. Yep. It's front and center, it's always been front and center, but as it consolidates, we're seeing a straight, straight path. Um, the question that people want to know is, will everyone have fair access to VMware as an independent company, vis-a-vis -vis the new big mega merger was announced uh, by Michael Dell just minutes ago that September 7th will be the close date. What are you talking date. about? <laughs> Dell Technologies. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's official, news. Chad, you can talk about it. Dell <laughs> announced it, Michael tweeted about it. We're not bait and switching okay. you. you can yeah, show no. his tweets uh, if you want. <laughs> Chad but, said. I'm joking, I'm joking. And, and by the way, I'm so pumped and so excited. Um, you know, frankly, I think 
I think not everybody understands exactly what's going on inside the industry. The server storage uh, and networking ecosystems as standalones are actually shrinking. As workloads move to SaaS, as workloads move to public cloud IaaS, the, the parts of the ecosystem that are growing are customers that are basically saying, I want converged, hyper-converged, and turnkey software stacks, and that's the way that they want to consume because they want to simplify stuff down. To be able to pull that off, you have to have all the ingredients inside the stack. You, you are increasingly, you will not be able to be competitive without having all of those components in the stack, and this is why I'm passionate that convergence, hyper-convergence and convergence, and also turnkey software stacks will be at the center of Dell Technologies. And I keep telling Michael, and he keeps agreeing, which is a good thing, right? <laughs> now, the reality of it is, is that we cannot, in spite of that statement being true, it is also true that people will continue to want variability. That may be a declining set, but it's a bigger set of customers, and the customers are like, I'm all in on turnkey. So this one's smaller, but growing faster. This one's a much bigger ecosystem of, I'll mix and match whatever I want and put it together, right? So if you look at Yan Bing's session, so she said HP with vSAN. Then she went VxRail, and Yan Bing, thanks for the shout out, you know, during the session, that was awesome. Uh, that we're powering basically some great events with Dai Data and powerful things in small packages. That's a highly integrated system. And then they brought up a customer that was totally building it themselves, right? So it literally in the span of two minutes, you had the continuum of build it yourself, a turnkey thing, build it yourself. So will it be sustained? Yeah. Can you expect that we are going to lean in like crazy on our integrated stack? Yeah. But will we do it in exclusion of the open And not mutually exclusive. No. They're just different use cases. Yeah, so look, VxRail is winning in the marketplace because it's a highly opinionated vSphere HCIA. If you don't have vSphere, you don't like VMware, it's not the HCIA for you, right? However, more customers say yes than they say no, and that's awesome. <laughs> but we know that we're going to need to create a next generation version of the Microsoft Azure stack on-prem HCIA. It won't be built by the VX Rail team, but their customers want it that way. And uh, you know, we're not talking about a lot this week, but last week we launched VX Rack Neutrino, which is a turnkey OpenStack KVM SUSE based thing. Choice, baby. Yeah. So, 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 Chad. First of all, the, the Dell deals announced. So, what? This is the final nail in the coffin of VCE, correct? Absolutely. Of course not. <laughs> so, look. What? It, the reason that we are shifting the way we talk about VCE is something really simple. If I say VCE, what's the first thing that appears in your brain? V block. V, v block. And that's a good thing in a sense. Yeah, how right? much revenue did you do last year, Chad? Three plus three point five plus billion dollars almost entirely in VBlock and VXBlock. Yeah, that'd be a nice public company on its own. On its own, right? <laughs> and growing at 40% cumulative annual, annual growth rates. Yeah. Like that is it's amazing. amazing, right? Yeah. It's and by not the a way, fail. And by the way, the thing that's interesting <laughs> is that hasn't slowed down one iota in spite of the fact that everyone knows the Dell deal is going to close. However, the difficulty it is is that we are now no longer just the VBlock group we have these hyper-converged appliances that are growing like sync, and customers are voting with their feet and their dollars. And I think in a short amount of time, we'll be the number one by customer, by revenue, HCIA player in the market. But furthermore, we also do these turnkey cloud stacks. So realistically, VCE is more of a product brand than it is a company brand. And we are no longer a separate company. We're part of EMC, and on the 7th, will be part of Dell EMC. All right, so Dad, uh, Chad, can you help us connect the dots? You've got the converged infrastructure, the platform, yep. you've got some solutions team. Talked about SaaS and public cloud. How does kind of Dell, EMC, VMware stay relevant going forward and play a part in, in that whole story? So, so uh, it's, a, it's a great question. I'm going to try and see if I can do this in an uncharacteristically concise way. Do you believe that hybrid cloud models will win? Sure. Like, do you really believe it? I mean, what we have today isn't really good hybrid cloud, yeah. but that's where we need to go. So, by the way, we need to make the on-premise clouds as simple and easy to consume in utilitized modes as the public clouds are. Love that. Right? <laughs> However, I think that it is in inherent that 
economics, governance, data gravity will always balance out some workloads biasing towards public, some biasing towards private. Furthermore, do you think that there will be one cloud model that will win? Will it all be the, the VMware SDDC cloud? Will it all be Azure? Will it all be Amazon? Will it all be Cloud Foundry? Will it all be soft layer? Well, Andy Jassy has an answer for you, but many people will differ with that, including Satya and Michael and everybody else. I, so. I think that, I think that um, there's never been in the history of all time <laughs> any sustained period where there's a singularity of a stack. Yeah. Uh, VMware's done pretty good for a while. Yeah, <laughs> but by the way, there's never, like I said, in all of history, any extended period of time when there's been a singularity of a stack, right? So our point of view is very simple. My mission in the Converge Platform Division today is basically to build turnkey CI and HCI to power VMware powered clouds and Cloud Foundry powered clouds. Tomorrow, post, you know, tomorrow meaning on the 7th, immediately my strategic posture towards Microsoft pivots. EMC has always had a partnership with Microsoft, but nothing like Dell's, right? right? So immediately I'm going to go, well, we must have the best on and off premises version of the Microsoft Azure stack. Dell currently actually leads in that market, but it's very early days of that. So we go from having two clouds, both on and off premises, to a third one that we add. And then of course there's a fourth one, which says if you want to run your most mission critical business critical classic apps, VirtuStream is the way to go for an SAP legacy landscape that you want to put in the cloud. That needs to have an on-premise variant too. So four clouds, each one on and off premises, each one of them available in CapEx or utilitized models. If we can pull that off, we can be the strongest cloud player on the market bar none. And I think that's cool. With the choice as the key uh, sales pitch to the client, which is pick the cloud that does the best job, the tool for the job. The thing that's interesting is sometimes choice is a euphemism for blah. Yeah. Like I have no strategy, I have no opinion, it's just pick whatever you want and assemble it. What I'm describing is something a little bit yeah. different, which is choice between four highly opinionated turnkey offers, yeah. right? Now of course, we'll enable customers to build their own things, but I think that over time, less and less customers are going to want to do that. And Chad, I think that points to what we've seen in the wave of converged infrastructure and cloud is we need to get out of that heterogeneous mess where yep. you know, I've got the poor guy buried in wires, running around, totally. trouble tickets and everything else like that. It needs to be simpler. We need to have the management tools. Uh, I mean, Chad, Chad, I want to get your viewpoint on VMware. Uh, yep. you know, one of the criticisms I've heard is kind of the cloud management stack it, we've been swinging a bunch at this, and we don't yet have a solution that customers are happy with. Where do you think we are? Where do we need to go? So, so uh, you've been around the block on this, and customers who are watching have been around the block on this. Cloud management platforms are tough. It's actually a very, very fragmented market with very little uh, consolidation in the past or even looking forward. Now, inside that space, vRealize is actually the strongest and it's the most deployed, it's the most widely used, but again, I don't want to make it sound like, ah, oh, number one, right? Clearly there's a lot of, uh, a lot of work to be done. Last night I was talking uh, with uh, uh, Sajay, who heads up the vRealize you know, suite team, and what we've seen is that the team has done a lot of work out of the 6.x, 6.5. You know, and 6.x days into the 7.x days, and Customer feedback is that it's much closer to the mark. A, in terms of core product, workflow, upgradability, all of those sorts of things, but also in the fact that it actually has extended out to be able to automate and deploy on top of Azure and AWS in the beginnings of the extended Cloud Connect you know, vision. Uh, now that said, I, in, in those four opinionated Cloud Stacks, now this is my personal opinion here, Stu, so I always have to uh, you know, safe harbor, all that, all that jazz. <laughs> um, I think that what you see is you see those highly opinionated cloud stacks, the CMP layers, the top part of it, being able to speak to each other, but always favoring their own ecosystem. Yep. Right? And I think that we're going to be in that mode for a long time. 
Yeah, so Chad, some people might not be aware that in addition to kind of the, the VCE you know, products in there, the, the solutions piece yep. and the cloud that you have, you know, the progress that you've made. We, we've talked to some of your team, I think we've got Peter coming yep. on uh, today. Can you talk about kind of the EHC, NHC, maybe even share a little bit of revenue if you can? Yeah, sure, so, um, so first things first, it's important to understand this at its core. The original idea of VCE, which is now like, you know, eight years old, was a basic premise that says, we have a pile of giblets that are all awesome. However, customers struggle to assemble them and they want to have a turnkey offer that they can lean on us to not only deploy, but sustain support as a single offering. That was the origination story. Replace server network and compute with hypervisor, IT business operations, uh, a CMP, all of those things, and you have the enterprise hybrid cloud. We, we started getting lots of feedback from customers. Says, we love vSphere, we love vRealize, we love vRealize you know, automation and, and operations, we love all of this log insight stuff, we're all in with VMware, can you guys give us the easy button, right? And so we started on version one, then on version two, version three, 3.5, and this week we announced version 4.0, right? We're now up to hundreds of customers, so it's still in the like hundreds, but it is the most curated, the most turnkey way to get the VMware SDDC deployed. Now, I still think we have a ways to go because we need to make it so push button easy and cloud foundations that uh, you know Pat announced on, on Monday is a core part of that. Think of cloud foundations turning into validated designs and the enterprise hybrid cloud being the ultimate manifestation. Chad, just a clarification, hundreds of customers, but from a revenue standpoint, that's probably bigger than the hyper-converged market. <laughs> so you know what's fascinating? That's actually a fact. Yeah. So I hadn't really thought about it, but basically we're currently on a revenue run rate that we don't disclose publicly, but I'm like, okay, how do I tiptoe around this? It is larger than the largest HCIA players by a, a good margin. Right. So you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars worth of annual revenue. Yeah. And customers are saying, look, I'm in. I, I, I saw the keynote. I'm aligned with VMware. I want to go, right? And Enterprise Hybrid Cloud is, is designed to do that. We keep reiterating on it. On Virtual Geek, there's a whole slew of details on the 4.0 release. And then the other thing that we started to see is we started to see customers say, I get it. With the Enterprise Hybrid Cloud, you've made my IT operations for classic IT better. How do you help my developers build a digital enterprise? Which doesn't start with infrastructure, and it doesn't start with IaaS, it starts with the way developers see the world, which is the platform layer. And uh, we're on version 1.1 now of the native hybrid cloud, which is targeted at how do we build a platform for building native, cloud native apps. And that starts not with infrastructure, not with VMware, not with EMC, not with servers or network, it starts with Cloud Foundry. Yeah, we got to wrap. I want to get one final point in, and I want to get your thoughts on it. It's um, more of a historical perspective, but also kind of a futuristic. Take your uh, EMC hat off, put the, the personal chat hat on. Ecosystem, where is it going to go? I mean, obviously, it's, 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 it's consolidating, which means it's shifting. So the old ecosystem that was great and robust, as you mentioned, uh, is not necessarily dying. It's just shifting. It's consolidating. So that means it's shifting to something else where there will be growth. Where is it moving? Where is that puck going so people can skate to where the puck will be? Um, that's, a great, that's a great question, John. And you know, like, I'm always a geek at heart. Um, I'm always going to run that vSphere cluster in my basement. It gives me joy <laughs> and gratitude on you know, cool new Intel uh, you know, NUCs, so all great stuff. But in my new job, <laughs> you know, as a leader of a big business, uh, the broad landscape picture is fascinating. So this isn't actually rocket science. You can decode it remarkably quickly. In industries that are declining or under pressure, secular pressure, consolidation is inevitable and you have to pick your partners wisely. I think people underestimate how much giants that they would think of as safe and you know, secure bets are under pressure and the, Michael was wise enough to be, take first mover advantage because in those periods, no one has shrunk themselves to success, right? Uh, conversely, you see very diversified ecosystems. When you see a very diversified ecosystem, ergo, cloud management platforms, ergo, security, like, oh my goodness, like the number of security startups and players, 
uh, hyper-converged startups. I count 39 of them at the last turn, right? They go through a life cycle of explosion of ecosystem and then inevitable consolidation phase. And people look at that consolidation phase and say, oh, it's, it's the fun's all over. No, that means that the fun has begun because you're actually now starting to really move the needle at customers, right? So you can expect to see consolidation in the security space. You can expect to see, by the way, very disruptive point technologies occur. The container ecosystem is going to explode and then consolidate. And when you see that consolidation happening, the Container X Cisco acquisition is one of the earlier indications in that space, but just, just one of them. It means that it's moving from sizzle to steak. Again, look at the OpenStack ecosystem. You know, about a year ago, everyone's like, oh, all the fun's over. All of them have consolidated down into the big massive players. It's because people are now getting down the to the rubber hitting the road. The rubber's hitting the road. Okay, so where is it going now? Where's the fun going to be? Uh, the fun is definitely going to be uh, very much in new data fabrics and new applications. There's no rocket science there. Uh, the space that you saw the tip of the iceberg on the cloud, uh, you know, cloud connection of how you can bridge. Bridge doesn't mean migrate. It means create connective tissue between on-premises and off-premises clouds. It's going to be really, really interesting. I think one thing that is fascinating is roles for human beings that span functions. That is the new magic like mojo. When I find someone who is a developer who understands infrastructure, they got mojo. When you find someone who understands the span of what's going on inside the ecosystem, that person's got As a they say in baseball, the multiple tools are uh, is the players, so I got yeah. to have multiple tools in their bag. Chad, we got a break, but I mean, great uh, conversation. Guys. Thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Good seeing you, congratulations on all your business success, and uh, September 7th is going to be the big close date for the, the mega transaction. It's going to be awesome, <laughs> and by the way, guys, congrats to you. Seven years of this, it's great. I can't wait for next year, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks, Chad Sacker here, inside theCUBE, where all the things are happening here at VMworld, inside the hang space at the Mandalay Bay this year for VMworld 2016. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back. You're watching theCUBE. Ah.